Okay. <coughs> We're up to um, Mishnah 17, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, Mishnah Yud Zion. And uh, how about somebody taking us away on this? And uh, Bill is uh, going to try to rejoin, I hope. I'm sorry, sorry Rabbi. What's the page? Chapter 1 of Pirkei Avot, Mishnah 17. Okay. And depending on what edition you have, it's different pages. Okay. Okay. So somebody please read, please. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here comes Bill. Can you hear me now? Good. Good. All right. Good. So, Good. Sorry. Good. Can you please mute yourself, please? God. Um, all right. So who's who is going to unmute themselves and read this? All right, Craig, go ahead. Shimon, his son, said, All my days I have grown up among the wise, and I have found naught of better service than silence. Not learning, but doing is the chief thing, and whoso is profuse of words causes sin. Okay. So uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so it says, Shimon, Simon, his son. So his son, previous Mishnah, Rabban Gamliel. So we talked all about Rabban Gamliel last time. Rabban Gamliel is the first of the uh, patriarch rabbis, uh, meaning the first um, uh, rabbi who's the head of a recognizable institution of other rabbis. And uh, um, he, uh, as we will see, he founded a dynasty. Um, the leadership of uh, the Jewish people in uh, Palestine, as it was called by the Romans, um, passed down it within his house most of the time. We'll see a little, you know, wrinkles here and there, but he became, he was the head, he passed it on to his son, his son passed it on to his son, and so on. So um, here we have Shimon, his son. Um, when we, um, when we see just that very first um, introduction, um, we notice that it's a little different than what we've had in the past, yes? The answer is yes. You don't have to unmute yourselves. The answer is yes. So, but, but please, what's the, what, what's the, uh, what are some of the differences or what's the basic difference that we see um, going now to, to Mishnah 17? Yeah, John. Well, I think what's it's a humorous, it's a little humorous to me because it's like he grew up with all the no, other forget I'm not looking at anything he said. Okay. Nothing. All I'm looking at is Shimon, his son, said. No further information. We don't know his name. We do know his name. His name is Shimon. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Right. Well, Jennifer, yeah. A lack of honorifics or anything? There's no lack of honorific. Lack of honorific, correct. He's not called rabbi, right? We've had we've had uh, now with Rabban Gamliel. We have the beginning. I made a whole big you know deal about this. This is the beginning of a rabbinic uh, um, identif identifier, and he's the Rabban Gamliel. His father is the rabbi of rabbis. So there are plenty of rabbis going along, and um, Shimon is not called rabbi. If we cheat and we look at the next Mishnah. There is Rabban again, another uh, Rabban Shimon. And then, you know, we have Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi uh, all the time. So um, his son, also he's called his son. Um, so the assumption that many people make is that actually this is before he became Rabbi, Shim, Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon. This is when he's still this up and coming guy and everybody's paying attention to him because he happens to be, you know, you know, the boss's son. So uh, um, he's uh, he's um, credited with saying stuff that people have taken note of, and it's recorded for posterity, but not because he has attained the uh, mastery, of, which is what a rav means, the master. He's not, not because he's retained he's attained his own mastery officially yet, but out of that legacy 
uh, status that he has. And uh, so we, we should note that. And then we can go into what John started noticing. So now, John, what, what were you saying about what, what the next, the next uh, phrase is? Oh, the whole thing together made me think, think it's like, a, what is that? Josie, that mute yourself. Yeah, you're muted. I don't know what happened. Some Good. advertisement decided to go. Sorry about Ooh. that. Well, um, so open, what I noticed it's is- It's open door Judaism. It's to anybody. <laughs> it's okay. like, it's, it's a little bit like he's the teenager who grew up with all these sages. Right. right. Like all they do is talk. I found nothing better than silence. Right, right, and right. Study's not the thing and do things. Don't talk about it. Like you, you can imagine a sullen teenager saying all those things. Why would up. you why would you imagine such things? I don't know. I don't you know it's crazy. I'm just sort of stretching out a little bit. Imagine. Yeah, good. You go you're going out of your own uh, yeah, area of expertise. Exactly. Huh? exactly, yeah. Right. Good. Um so that would be one way to read it, right? One way to read it is you know, I'm, I'm always hanging around listening to dad with all of his colleagues and they talk all night long. The Zoom sessions are endless. It's just meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. It would really, you know what? The be as far as I'm concerned, a little silence would go a long way, right? Um, they just don't know how to mute themselves. So that would be one way uh, uh, to read it. Um, we uh, usually look at different translations, right? That we try to compare our, uh, you know, basically our collection of basically the same translation with Rabbi Shapiro's translation. So, Bill, you were in and out. So, uh, All right, I'm we're, here. On, we're on Mishnah 17. Yep, what do you got have? It. Got it. Shimon Ben Gamliel teaches. No, I... we're on Shimon, his son. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm looking at, at 117. You got, no, you got it right. Shimon ben Gamliel. Yeah. Oh, you no, that's not what it says in the Hebrew. That may be, but I'm reading Rabbi, I'm Rabbi, reading Rabbi Shapiro's translation. Oh, Rabbi Shapiro. so he ruins it for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I, I can only read what I have in front of me. I've got the Hebrew on the side. But I've got the the, the, the Hebrew Shapiro's on the English side. In front. Just let's make sure. All right, go further and let's see what happens. Okay. Shimon ben Gabriel teaches, I was raised on the talk of sages, and yet I find nothing more true than silence. Action, not words, is the main thing, and excessive talk leads to error and delusion. Oh, and delusion. And delusion. And delusion. Okay. Um, in the Hebrew, the word is chet, the literal meaning sin, right? But uh, Rabbi Shapiro is not comfortable with the, with the notion of sin, so he likes delusion better. Um, well, my, my understanding of, of hate, uh, it, it may be defective, obviously, is, is has to do with the idea of an arrow missing the mark. And that's quite different from our English notion of sin, if I'm so, right. So, yeah, so that's, that's true in some kind of um, uh, etymological sense. Um, but um, in terms of traditional um, understandings, starting with the Bible, going through rabbinic tradition. Um, a chet is a sin, sorry. Um, you know, that's, and, and all of the, what you've been taught is the product of a modern mm. uh, trend of getting very, very uncomfortable about thinking that people sin. First of all, it sounds a little goyish. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, second of all, none of us want to own, you know, say that we actually did something so terrible as sin. We missed the mark. We made a mistake, Take. and so on. But uh, um, okay. sin is uh, is a real concept, um, and as you well know from from Zohar uh, studies, it's it's definitely recognized as real. Um, so. And of course, there are different kinds of sins. There are egregious sins, there are slight sins, there are accidental sins, and so on. But uh, um, um, missing the mark is a very, very positive spin on mm. sin. You know, I, 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 I wanted to kill you and I did. Oh, I guess I missed the mark. No, you sinned, you killed somebody. So, uh, um, there's, there's uh, we just should recognize sometimes, you know, the, the, the cultural context that we're in. And there's a lot of progress that, that's been made by that kind of critical 
rethinking of things. It's just good to, to recognize mm. that that's the process that we're involved in. So um, he says, all my days I've, I've uh, lived, I've, I've uh, grown up, Gadalti, I've grown up um, among the sages, right? So that's an, an, an introductory uh, sentence, right? He's not doing our uh, three-part, you know, he said the following, A, do this, B, don't do this, C, do this, or this is important, this is important, this is not important, right? It's not these three very uh, straightforward propositions. He begins with a, with a personal introduction, which is also, I think, um, interesting it has both a kind of humility and also a kind of teenage arrogance to it, right? Um, he's recognizing that he's, you know, a young whippersnapper, but, you know, he's not exactly being silent, is he? You no, know, he's not, you know, if, if silence is golden, he's choosing to tell us that silence is golden rather than just being quiet himself, right? So uh, um, it, it, he's, he's occupying an interesting position here. Um, Yes, Sarita. So he, um, you know, you could say that this is arrogance, but he's also saying that, you know, he's growing up among these people and not jumping in with your own thoughts um, is, you know, he has, you know, maybe that's not the right way to go, rather listening um, and really trying to listen to what they're saying. I mean, so you could take it that way as well as not being arrogant and saying that in fact, um, I could have, and hey, I know better than anybody, right? You know, teenagers often think that they know, but he's actually saying, you know, I'm not going to jump in and start my opinions. I'm going to to listen uh, to what those people are saying. So that brings us back to to actually how we frame what he's saying. Um, so we looked at it as a kind of a little bit of a critique, a little bit of impatient, young young upstart uh, uh, observation. What if we looked at it the other way? What if we looked at it as in observing these sages, this is what I've learned from them. This is, in other words, he's not criticizing them for talking too much and for all the meetings and all that kind of stuff. He's actually said, I've been watching these guys and this, these are the qualities that they exemplify for me. Um, we should understand that he doesn't walk away from this community. He now, of course, there's an incentive. He's like, he's got you know, power and wealth um, you know, as a legacy, but he, he, in all of his years, we know, uh, was a faithful and active member of the, of the rabbinic leadership and promoting rabbinic Judaism. So we could see it as the other way. We could see it as, uh, who am I? I'm not going to tell you what to do, but let me tell you as an observer what I've learned what to do from what they do, from what they say what they do, right? That would be another way to do it. Craig, you wanted to say something. Okay, so the uh, um, Gerilyn's got her hand up. Where are you? Sorry, Gerilyn. Sorry, um, I came in late, so I don't know if anybody read this or not. But I have the old. Wait, first I want to assure you that we all thought of you, and we are recording. I That's see okay. that. Okay, good. Go ahead. Sidurus, I have the old Sidurus Sim Shalom translation. Okay. I don't know if anybody read that. Go ahead. Um, it says, throughout my life, I was raised among the scholars, and I discovered that there is nothing more becoming a person than silence, not study. But doing mitzvot is the essence of virtue. Except wait, wait. Silence and not study? Right. There is nothing be more becoming a person than silence. Is there a pause there? Yes. Is okay. this semicolon. Not study, but doing mitzvot is the essence of virtue. Excess to speech leads to sin. There we go. All right. Yes, Adam. So there's something, I'm reading this in a very ironic fashion. Um, it's almost as if the person who recorded this is trying to make fun of Shimon. Um, because it's, um, I don't know quite how to describe it, but it's, it's like, you can picture him talking to someone saying, the best thing for a person is silence. 
don't want to talk too much. Definitely, you just actions, don't want to talk too much. Silence is best. And here he's just kind of saying all these things. It's almost like somebody recorded this as um, to poke fun at Shimon. Um, because this is, he doesn't have the honorific. He's not, he's not a, a, a rabbi here. He's just, you know, this is what, this is what his father, the rabbi said. And his son used to go on and on about how talking in too many words was a bad thing. Right. So, so this brings us again to the whole question of what assumptions or what uh, inclinations we have as we read the text. Right, the text sits there, and it's really vulnerable to the uh, to the uh, to the way that it's going to be read. You know, there's there's a famous famous joke. So um, sit down, relax. I'll tell it. Okay. Um, so the the joke is, and many people have heard it, and I've heard it many times since I've told it many times. Um, but it's it's a uh, it's a goodie, if I can tell it right. Um, so. Uh, the the scene is it's the uh, the common turn um, meeting the, the communist party the revolutionary party is is convened and uh, uh, comrade Lenin is is running uh, the show and uh, he says comrades and he waves this piece of paper and he goes I have an important communication from Comrade Trotsky. And I want to read it to you. Josie, you're nodding your head. You, you heard the joke. So, uh, um, and he says, Dear Comrade Lenin, I was wrong. You were right. You are the leader of the Communist Party. Comrade Trotsky. Sorry. Do it the other way. Dear Comrade Trotsky, you are the leader of the Communist Party. You were right, I was wrong. Comrade, all right. Okay, so that's, you got it. So the whole assembly stands on their feet and they're clapping and they're, and they're cheering victory against Trotsky and the Trotskyites. And Bernstein is sitting in the back and he's just sitting there scratching his, his, his uh, face. So Lenin sees everything and he says, Bernstein, you're not clapping. Uh, you're not uh, cheering. So he says, uh, Comrade uh, Lenin, I, I, I don't know that if you're reading the letter right. Um, I think what it says is, dear Comrade Lenin, you're the leader of the Communist Party. You were right. I was wrong. Oh, last line. Excuse me, <laughs> Comrade, Comrade Trotsky. So that's the that's the line. So so the how you how you read the words, you know, is is up to you. Boy, I killed that one this time. I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone. No, it's okay. It's okay. Right after I'm going to start having you to got, write. You got the e card. I'm get I'm getting too old to remember them on uh, by by heart. So <laughs> um, excuse me. You know that's actually the the the, the real punchline. Um, so um, yeah, how do we read this? Do we read this as as a text that's um, you know, uh, in good faith, do we read it with that with that extra little edge to it? As people have said, do we read it one way or the other? It's really very much up to us. Um, and uh, I think to a certain extent, we would uh, also ask ourselves, are there factors that should tend toward our reading it one way or another? Tend us, move us, incline us to read it one way or the other. Um, so, you know, I think that we can enjoy the possibilities. Uh, I think in the end, probably um, the, the more uh, um, affirmative and less critical reading is probably uh, the, the preferable one. Um, let's look at the, at, at the, sec the, the first of his, of his three um, guidance rules, right? So I have not found, um, or uh, other people had some other uh, uh, way of translating that, that, that anything is better for, um, now the word here is goof, which is an interesting word. Goof literally means body. 
the translation that we have, I've grown up above, I found nothing better for the human being or for the person. What else did we have? Uh, nothing more true. Nothing more true. More right? becoming. More becoming to what? More becoming a person. More becoming a person. So the person is the, is the goof. They're translating goof as person. And, uh, and uh, Rabbi Shapiro translates the phrase exactly how? Uh, yet I find nothing more true than silence. Right, so he takes out the goof part as, as referring to a human being and saying it goof meaning the, the essence. There is nothing more essentially true than this and that. Jennifer, you wanted to say something? Sorry, okay. So, she's sewing, so when her hand comes up, you think. Yeah, she's sewing, that's it, right? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. So uh, I know that was knitting, I know. So, um, but uh, um, that's, that's part of what he might be, uh, uh, the question that we might think about. Is he talking about how one's behavior, not in terms of truth or learning or, or, uh, or uh, um, you know, just uh, uh, the intellectual part of it, it's it's better for for the body. It's better it's better to sit quiet for a while. It's like good for you. You know, it, it's uh, the the other stuff will come, but you need to be a little bit, uh, um, you know, sort of quieted down. Maybe. The next phrase is. Uh, which we've translated in different ways. We've got not study, but deeds, something like that, right? What were some of the other translations that we had? Because here we have the word midrash contrasted with ma'aseh. So how are the translations here about midrash? Uh, Rabbi Shapiro sort of turns it around, action, not words, is the main thing. So he uses the word words for Midrash, yeah. right? Words. But Midrash is not just words, words, right? If we look at Mishnah 15, Shammai, his second uh, statement is, emor ma'at va'aseh harbeh. Say little and do much. much. Do a lot. Say a little and do a lot. Now with, with, with Shimon's statement, he says, Lo hamidrash ikar Obviously it's along the same lines, but there's a different kind of uh, focus, a different kind of emphasis, right? The, the Shammai statement is a, a, a guidance for action. Don't talk so much, just do things. Do what you need to do. So, so it's very, very much about, about doing, actually. Don't say, just do. But Shimon is saying some kind of uh, evaluative statement. Yeah, uh, Geraldine, you wanted to say something. It says not study, but doing mitzvot is the essence of virtue. Okay, so the word virtue is not in there. Okay. The word in the Hebrew is essence, ikar. So that is there. So they're pointing us to the fact that he's making an evaluative judgment. What is of the essence? What's of the essence is not Midrash, it's Maaseh. Midrash, we're gonna leave for a second. Maaseh is easier. Maaseh means action, right? Means doing, okay? So in that sense, that's the same word. Aseh harbe is what Shammai said, do a lot. Maaseh is the noun. Aseh is the verb do things, and ma'aseh is doing, the doing of things. But the word that um, Shammai uses, emor, means say things, say very little. But the word that uh, Shimon uses is not amira, or not even dibur, speech, but midrash. And midrash has associations, we all, should be familiar, we've heard these words if we've been studying it, you know, uh, um, uh, Torah a little bit, we know that word Midrash here and there. Sarita, yeah. Uh, so I also was um, thinking that, that what Shimon is talking about is that, not that study is not important, but that 
it's not an end in and of itself. That study, um, acting, doing, um, is the best thing. It is 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 what the is is the important is the most important thing. But I think also it ties them together. So where it says that learning isn't the endpoint or study isn't the endpoint, it's what you do. But it also connects the doing with the studying because what you do needs to be informed. Yeah, so the word midrash, good. The word midrash has both, um, you know, associative meetings and it also has um, a kind of, a, a you know, a etymological set of associations. The word midrash comes from the word seeking. Lidrosh is to seek, so seek after something. So it's not, for instance, study, I've got to memorize the table of elements. Mm. That's not midrash. Right? I've, got to I've got to memorize all of the capitals of the 50 states of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's not midrash. Right? Um, a lot of, uh, you know, what are, all the exams that we take, most of them actually do not require midrash. Right? Remember, you know, all the, all, you know, all the laws that you have to remember for, for, you know, the bar exam or something like that. Midrash is delving into something, seeking out what this is about. And it could be seeking out where are the biblical roots of present day Jewish uh, practice and thinking. So that could be halacha, it could be agada, right? Midrash is used for both. To get a little deeper, to go deeper into things. So what Shimon is saying and to a certain extent, Midrash is one of the great um, creations of rabbinic Judaism. It, it existed before, but it wasn't made into a full-time uh, uh, field and occupation until the rabbis came along. Um, and they made it into um, a, 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 a focus. So in a certain sense, he's saying, yeah, yeah, there is Midrash, but it's not the essence. The essence has to be, where does this Midrash lead? Does it lead you to do things or not? In another place, the Talmud says that they debated in the academy, in the Beit Midrash, um, Talmud Ikar o Midrash, or, or Maase Ikar. Is, it, is, is study more important, the main thing, or is doing the main thing? And they debated it and they debated it and they debated it. And finally they decided Talmud Ikar Hamevi Lidemas Shemevi Lidemas. Study is the essence in that it it leads to acts. Right? A certain kind of study is of the essence. And that's what Sarita was saying. Otherwise, we're gonna have later on Lo Ama Aretz Hasid. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't be pious. You can't actually really understand what the dynamics are of the situation that, me, that require you to make choices. You have to think about it. You have to ponder it. You have to study it. You have to delve into it. But what Rabbi Shimon is saying, uh, Sh well, he will be eventually Rabbi Shimon, uh, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Um, it's too bad that, uh, uh, that Rabbi Shapiro loses that distinction there. Um, what he's saying is it's got to come out into acts. So Shammai's statement is, we could even say, if we wanted to push it a little bit, historically speaking, a little bit when Midrash was still in its infancy, he wasn't talking about Midrash, he was talking about just you know, plain human behavior. You know, be a little more, more uh, uh, you know, uh, circumspect in speaking and, and do, uh, you know, do more. What Rabbi Shimon is, what Shimon is saying is, in terms of the, the seeking out, the creating of, of, the, of the understandings of Judaism that we have, um, please, you have to understand that it's got to end up translating into deeds, into what's really important. All right, we have to stop here. Um, and uh, God willing, wait, there's a chat thing here. Oh, that's just a Safari link. Okay, so uh, hopefully see you um, next year. Is it next year? Yeah, um, sure. 2021, next Sunday. Okay. All right. Yes, call. Happy New Year. Stay Thank safe, you. everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Happy New Year.